So where are we in our lives or where are you in your life? Where am I in my life in different areas? Am I a cook or am I a chef? A chef has to actually really create an experience. Transaction is doing the job and getting the outcome, but it's beyond that. It's giving a little bit of yourself, your creativity and your heart and soul goes into something. Welcome to the Thought Leader Revolution with Nikki Ballou. Join the revolution. There's never been a better time in history to speak your truth, find your freedom, and make your fortune. Each week, we interview the world's top thought leaders and learn the secrets of how they built a six to seven figure practice. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice. Welcome to another exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. I'm your host, Nikki Baloo, and we have a very special Thought Leader Nugget episode for you today. Today is Thought Leader Nuggets number 124, and I've got a treat for you because it's not just me today. We've got a guest, and the guest is the most incredible fabulous, exceptional woman on earth, my partner in life and business, the one and only Teresa Dugwell. Hello, sweetheart. Hi, Nikki. Good to have you here with me. Thanks. So you said something super brilliant today, and it made me decide to chuck the original idea I had for this episode out and go with what you came with. And you drew a distinction between cooks versus chefs, and you have a story that goes with it. So tell me the story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm a, a big Starbucks fan, uh, and so I think my biggest part is the connection with the baristas because there's so many incredible people I meet in a Starbucks, and the baristas work their butts off and uh, do some incredible things there. And um, I noticed, though, uh, one of the drinks that I love is steamed almond milk with Earl Grey tea bag or a latte with with um, almond milk but I love the almond milk and there's other nut milks as well one of the things I noticed was sometimes I would get a drink and it would taste um, very watery it was almost like I had water no almond milk and other times the drink tasted incredible and it it finally came to me what was happening and I was watching, started watching the baristas sometimes when they're busy pour the almond milk and, and uh, to steam it. And I noticed that there would be the top of the liquid would be water, it would just be plain water. And sometimes it would be the almond milk. And I thought, oh, it makes sense that it's a nut milk. Of course, there's, they're going to separate when they're sitting in a container, there's going sure. to be water. And, and sediment, right? right like, it's going to yeah. settle. And, yeah. and so the almond part is going to be on the bottom and the water on top. And you have to shake it. And you have to shake it to mix it up. And it needs to happen on a consistent basis. So I started making the request to shake the almond milk. And it literally transformed the drink. It was That was the drink I was having that was amazing because now mm -hmm. it was mixed. Now, what came to me out of that as well is that some baristas were doing it while others wouldn't do it. And um, and so I I sort of became known as the the woman that would always ask to have my almond milk have it have it shaken and shaken, not shaken, stirred yeah, like James Bond. <laughs> And, uh, but I saw other people's drinks still being made the other way. So if you ever notice your drink tastes like water and you have oat milk or you have almond milk or you have coconut milk, probably because it didn't get shaken. And, uh, but check that out. Anyhow, so I, I um, thought, well, you know, maybe it's something that it's not a learning. They have to actually learn this. They're not taught this. I don't know what's the training. So I spoke to the manager and I said, you know, here's a suggestion. This is what's happening. My experience here, I, your baristas are incredible people here and they work so hard and I understand when they're busy, but here's my challenge. Sometimes I have great drinks and other times I have really lousy drinks. And I said, 
the cost is the same regardless. And for me, the experience is so important. And I thought, here's a suggestion that you might want to implement to teach your baristas the difference. And I said, take three drinks. Take one, make a latte with almond milk, but just open up the container and pour it in. And you'll see that water comes out before the almond milk. And then the second one, just give it a little shake. And then the third one, give it a really good shake. And you will have three different drinks, three different experiences completely. And so she took that and went to teach her team something new. And I said, think of it this way. You can be given a, let's say, a, a potato and a piece of chicken and say, and someone will say, go cook that for me. And you'll go boil the potato and maybe you'll fry the chicken. And that will be a meal that's cooked. And it will be okay. It'll be good. It'll be okay. Or now if you're a chef and someone gave you a potato and a piece of chicken, chances are you wouldn't go boil the potato and you wouldn't fry the chicken. You probably would create something different where you maybe add in some spices or you would, you would do it something different because it would be more about the experience when you are creating something. So what came to me was, as a cook, you you me, you cook food. If you, if you're a cook and you're at home and you're cooking food, you just cook it up. Whereas as a chef, a chef has to actually really create an experience from what they create because it's a creation. And so that's what I thought with the drinks, the baristas, you could have the. I, and I said this to the manager. I said, imagine all your baristas here are chefs what that would mean for all your all these people coming in here if their experience was of a chef and they thought of themselves as chefs in creation versus just the cook now here's the difference as well you can look at you've got transaction and you've got an experience transaction is doing the job and getting the outcome however the experience is yes you're providing the transaction but it's beyond that it's giving a little bit of yourself, your creativity and your heart and soul goes into something. So where are we in our lives or where are you in your life? Where am I in my life in different areas? Am I a cook or am I a chef? Am I just doing it because I have to do it? Or I'm actually creating an experience in that. From the deepest recesses of my soul, am I bringing the very best of me into this? Am I creating something that reflects the type of man or the type of woman that I want to be? Or am I just doing the bare minimum? And that's brilliant. And if you're listening to this, listener, are you a cook or a chef in your business? Are you just doing what you're paid to do? Or are you bringing a masterpiece mentality? I like that, masterpiece mentality. Mm, masterpiece mentality. You bring in a masterpiece mentality to the level of service, to the level of solution and result that you're offering for your clients. I think this is brilliant. Cooks versus chefs. Cooks versus chefs, Teresa. That's going to be the title of your next book. I think it's going to make a, a fantastic series of episodes for you to go on a bunch of podcasts to talk about. Because if you bring that mentality, that masterpiece mentality, and you come in like a chef and you do what you do for your clients as a chef versus as a cook, the difference is night and day. The difference is between tragic and magic. The difference is between mediocre and masterful. One more thing I'll add to that, Nikki. Think about who do you know that is a cook versus who do you know that's a chef? It's the chefs that stand out. Yeah, like Wolfgang Puck and right. people like that. Yeah, where like the cook, it's just a different place. If there's yeah. cooks, still great. It's just yeah. a different place to be at. And, um, and a standard as well. No, it's fantastic. So a cook is like an expert and a chef is like a thought leader. That's the beauty of it. And that really just ties in well to our business. Teresa, thank you for bringing this brilliance to Thought Leader Nuggets number 124. And thank you for sharing this with me. And thank you for being in my life. You're wonderful. Thank you, Nikki. And that wraps up another amazing episode, exciting episode of the podcast, The Thought Leader Revolution. To find out more about the incredible Teresa, come and check out the show notes. She set world records. She's 
done over 12,000 hours of top level results coaching. You want to know all about this incredible, super powerful lady. And to find out more about this incredible concept, check out the show notes. If you liked it, give us a like, give us a rating, give us a review and share this with someone in your life who needs to hear this message. Until next time, goodbye. This episode has been brought to you by eCircleAcademy.com, the proven system to add six to seven figures a year to your thought leader practice.